like all members who have spoken in this house, uh, this wonderful debates approving our nominations, it's going to be a great trend to leave the house. But as the book of Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 8 says, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. Today comes that day to say goodbye to the Legislative Assembly. Honorable Speaker, as you are all aware, two weeks ago, His Excellency the President, Dr. William Samoe Ruto, nominated me as the Cabinet Secretary for National Treasury and Economic Planning, an appointment which I heartily accepted. Consequently, I have since been vetted by the Committee on Appointments and approved by this House to assume the new role. I want to thank you, members who have approved my nomination. By extending this hand of cooperation, may I exceptionally thank His Excellency the President for trust he bestowed upon me to sit at the topmost decision-making organ of the country. I am humbled by the warm gesture and remain mindful of the aspirations and expectations of Kenyans as I assume the office as the Cabinet Secretary, National Treasury and Economic Planning. Simply put, the people of Kenya are entrusting me with their granary. Honorable Speaker, in the backdrop of this long political journey, I wish to acknowledge my party leader, Right Honorable Raila Molodinga, and the entire ODM fraternity, who imparted the foundations of knowledge and skills on leadership, as well as trusting me with party leadership positions. I am equally indebted to the space, for the space to ride on the same party ticket to parliament for a record 17 years, priding myself as one of the longest serving members of this house. I have said one of the longest. The Honorable Shaquille Shaberi is complaining, but I have said one of the longest. The opportunity to serve as an assistant minister during the Grand Coalition government, minority leader in the 12 parliaments, public accounts committee chair, and of course, the chairmanship of ODM for a decade. I honestly appreciate your immense support, contribution, and encouragement. Your valuable contribution will always remain treasured in my heart forever. Honorable Speaker, on social aspect or social dimension of this undertaking have been answered to my family, beginning with my late parents for their blessings that I carry with me today to greatness. To my beloved wife, Rod and Buddy, and my children, I am forever indebted to you for being my sounding board always encouraging and pushing me to excel and be the best father and husband. Your full-time prayers, guidance, wisdom, and knowledge in the entire political journey gave me the zeal to proceed even during my lowest moments, and there were many. To my brothers, and that is where I'm going to end my family issues, may God bless you for your relentless efforts to support my academic journey and upbringing, always stepping in for our parents. Exceptional appreciation will go to two of my brothers, Stephen Ogola and Maurice Ogalo, if not for you, I would have dropped out of school. My brother, Stephen Ogola, I will never forget how you braved the harsh cold weather of Kericho tea plantations, denying yourself the basics to get me school fees from your meager savings. I salute you, how I wish our late parents were alive to witness this historic moment. They have always wanted the best for us. May God keep their soul in eternal peace. And to the people of Suba South, I am deeply conscious of the fact that the thrust, the thrust of dynamic debates and my parliamentary standing on the relevant issues was planted in me at a time of curious and unrelenting search for leadership position by you, my constituents, for three terms. I am grateful for the opportunity to serve you as your member of parliament for 15 years. Thank you for your support, organic love, and for ensuring that I won with increased majorities over the years. Honorable Speaker, as a community, we did exceedingly well, utilizing NGCDF to ensure that our children continue to access quality education by strategically renovating and expanding our educational infrastructure and bursaries to cope with the number of students enrolling in schools. We leverage the participation of our people in meaningful development to transform lives 
through bigger, broader, better managed and well-resourced constituency projects. We enhance participatory approaches within the constituency and ensuring judicial use of public resources and many more. Thank you once again for the opportunity to be your member for parliament. And now to my fellow Kenyans. I am overwhelmed by the messages of goodwill you sent before, during, and after my vetting. My heart is elated with the heartwarming compliments and well wishes I have received so far. This demonstrates the level of confidence and hope Kenyans have in me. And dear colleagues, now I come to members of the National Assembly. Dear colleagues, I have never shied from playing my role as a member of this house. I have diligently performed my legislative functions to the best of my knowledge for the last 17 years. To this day, I will cite a few. I have represented my constituents and special interests in the National Assembly as required. I have participated in the deliberation and resolutions of issues of concern to the people. I go on record as the only member of this House who, after meticulously analyzing the budget, man budget managed to discover a fictitious computer error of Kenya shillings 10 billion in the budget estimates for the financial year 2011 and 2012, which the ministry later acknowledged. I have participated in the enactment of the legislations in accordance with the Constitution, notably being part of the legislative task force that drafted the Public Finance Management Act 2012. As a member of the Constitutional Implementation Oversight Committee, I actively participated in the actualization of the Constitution of Kenya 2010, especially the enactment of legislations envisaged in the fifth schedule of the Constitution. Mr. Speaker, you'll remember you were with me in the 10th Parliament. Being in CIOC was very lucrative in the sense that people really respected you. Even ministers were fighting to be in that committee, and I got the privilege to be in that committee and I served diligently. In 2013, I'm proud to have brought an amendment to the VAT Act on basic commodities from being standard, standard rated to either zero rated or exempt community, which at least helped in lowering cost of living. I have diligently participated in appropriation of funds, as you all know, but I have outstandingly played my role in oversighting national government expenditures. I've also participated in the development of policies of national importance, just to mention but a few. I take over as Cabinet Secretary, Mr. Speaker, for the National Treasury and Economic Planning. I am acutely aware that we are at the center of a storm. A tax storm, a debt storm, and an economic storm. Nonetheless, we must forge forward. Honorable Speaker, I am aware of the very important relationship between the Cabinet Secretary and the National Treasury and this House. I cannot achieve any mandate without the support of the National Parliament as a whole. And therefore, from the onset, I want to plead for the support of this House in the work we are going to do. Honorable Speaker, I am also aware that the Finance Bill 2024 was very controversial. I also am also cognizant to the fact that the bill had some positive pro inchi provisions. <laughs> I propose to salvage these proposals. Firstly, I am aware that the bill contained provisions to make the housing levy and post-retirement medical contributions deductible. This would have elevated the pain on the pay slips of salaried employees. Secondly, the finance bill proposed to restore the provision on relief because of doubt or difficulty in recovery of tax. This provision is important because it allows the commissioner to deal with the difficulty in collection of taxes due to unavoidable circumstances on the part of the taxpayer. However, I'm also aware that honorable members have expressed dissatisfaction with the unfettered discretion of the commissioner. We can harmonize these two positions for the benefit of Mwanainchi and to stem the abuse of the tax abandonment provisions. Additionally, the bill, the bill was at uh, that was also amended by the House Committee or proposed for amendment to extend the tax amnesty program as was contained in Section 37E of the Tax Procedures Act for a further one year. This is a quick win for both the taxpayer and the government. The government will continue to recover and collect taxes. Actually almost done, Mr. Speaker. I think I have one, one and a half pages, if you don't mind. Further, the Departmental Committee on Finance and National Planning had proposed
proposed amendments to make eight items workable for small-scale farmers and businesses. We have opportunity to leverage on this good idea. Finally, we need to devise methods of expanding the tax base with a view to collecting taxes from the traditionally hard to collect sectors in line with the national tax policy. This is an important strategy to protect existing businesses from overtaxation. We must protect the goose that lays the golden egg as we find other geese to lay more eggs. Honorable Speaker, I am also aware that there have been concerns relating to the difficulty of doing business in this country. I intend to work with the planning department and other government departments and all the relevant stakeholders to review data and legislation with a view to enhancing the ease of doing business in Kenya. I am very passionate about the management of the Kenya Revenue Authority, Mr. Speaker. The first and most important aspect is that we must employ the principles of corporate governance in the management of KRA, just like any other corporate body. There should be a distinction between the role of the chairperson of the board, the board as a whole, and the commissioner general as the CEO and the management officers of KRA. Honorable Speaker, additionally, during the vetting, I spoke about recruitment of competent officers at the Kenya Revenue Authority. I favor the policy where graduate trainees were recruited and trained both in class and on job. We need to resolve policies that worked at the Kenya Revenue Authority before. Mr. Speaker, and this is my last speech, honorable members. Honorable Speaker, with regards to Article 2, 223 of the Constitution, I've been very vocal. As you are aware, I did propose an amendment of the Public Finance Management Act with a view to establishing some checks and balances of the use of this article. The bill did not proceed. However, I intend to ensure the prudent use of Article 223 of the Constitution in the overall fiscal framework. I am convinced that if we manage our debt and the application of Article 223 of the Constitution will have better balanced budgets, we may not need to overtax because we will have reduced expenditure side of the budget and this article will not be misused during my tenure at the National Treasury. Honorable Speaker, I seek the support of this House as we seek to improve the economic environment for the better of all Kenyans. As I, as I exit the place, I have called home for the last 27 year, 17 years, Mr. Speaker. I live with my head high, but I left an indelible mark in the history of this house. The strongest feeling I have, I have today in this last speech is gratitude. That is gratitude for the opportunities that I have had and for many people I have served with, but most importantly, for the many moments of connection and witness to the lives of others, which I believe is the deepest privilege of public life. Mr. Speaker, before I say my final word, I want to thank all of us. I interacted with almost every member of this house in one way or the other. And Mr. Speaker, I would tell you that I enjoyed working with members of parliament from across the aisle. I am one person who has very strong opinions and members know but we do it with decorum and with respect because Kenya belongs to all of us. I want to thank the leadership of the majority, the Honorable Kimani Chungwa, who is my friend and a professional colleague. At times, we didn't ag agree a lot, but outside the chambers, we were always friends, Mr. Speaker. There's one person who knows where I live and knows my children and wife because we are friends. Honorable Owen Bayer learned a lot from me. And you will continue to learn, even in the executive. I wish when I'm leaving the executive, you also enjoy join the executive at one stage. And of course, the whip, this whip, I got him from the streets and met at him to become who he is, Mr. Speaker. From the minority side, <laughs> minority side, my successor as minority leader, Honorable Pio Wandai, you have done well in that office. And I want to thank you that even though it was very difficult to work with someone you have succeeded, but we managed to strike a balance. And I want to thank all of you. Of course, Honorable Junet, we have come a long way. You know what we have gone through. I would not want to disclose in this house, <laughs> but we have faced a lot of challenges. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, to you, I want to be grateful to you again once more. We have interacted a lot. We started in the opposition, working together. Of course, I found you in the government. Then we worked in the opposition. When we were facing a lot of frustration, Mr. Speaker, you remember one time I had to save you up there when you were, some MPs wanted to kill you. And Mr. Speaker, I did my best to save you. But today, 
interestingly, we are finding ourselves somewhere again. So Stra I just strangely, pray. one yeah. of those who attacked me is in this house. Yes. <laughs> And but, it's a lady. But, but, in the, <laughs> but in the spirit of uh, forgiveness, Mr. Speaker, I want to just conclude by... And uh, she's my very good friend, I must say. I want to give a parting shot, Mr. Speaker. If by any chance I offended anyone of you, all members, through my actions, I kindly ask for forgiveness. Equally, for all those who wronged me, I forgive you. And by the way, I don't even see. None of you actually wronged me. So, but if there is any which I'm, who I may have forgotten, I forgive you. Thank you very much. Mr. Speaker, it's a very emotional moment. Imagine a place you have called home for 17 years, continuously. Now you are living to another uncharted waters. <laughs> may I pray that God bless Kenya and God bless National Assembly of the Republic of Kenya. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Honor, honorable members, I don't want to open any debate on this. On order, on behalf of the House, I'll give the leader of minority incoming two minutes and the leader of majority two minutes.